Listener discretion advised. The content may be offensive. 666 Young Street in Toronto is Manzibar Club. It's a strip joint. October 28, 2013. It's 8.41 p.m. and I'm at the club where I put in six days each week. This place is open daily except Christmas Day. I'm writing because, as usual, it's dead. Another very slow night. In what is supposedly Canada's largest city. This is appalling. And with Rob Ford as our drunken, crack-smoking, obese, sweaty mayor, we have become the laughing stock of the world. Because the entire world can clearly see that this emperor is naked. And it's rather unsightly, yet... There are many who say that they'd vote to keep him as mayor. And because the other mayoral candidates are all bad, he remains as the lesser of these evils. May God help us here. Olivia Chow promised to be a savior of sorts. That remains to be seen. Thursday, uh, Thursday November 7th, 2013. It's close to 5.30 p.m. and it's yet another slow dead time here at the former funeral parlor where the endless strange creaking sounds are more abundant than customers, which is why I am here writing at 666 Young Street in Toronto at a place called Manzi Bar. It's dead and has been dead for quite some time. Which is why I'm contemplating a return to my former life as performance artist and domino. My love of cooking has me in the kitchen at this strip club, a place where I clearly don't belong, but I'm thankful to have had the opportunity of uh, operating this kitchen at the club after it had been shut down by the city for too many <clears throat> sickening infractions thanks to the former chefs, both of whom were male, one white, and one Chinese, both as filthy as can be, and the Chinese man went to another strip club not too far from here named Kilmore's, which is now closed down. I was just informed that the kitchen at Kilmore's has been closed. This guy could obviously not clean up his act. He used to chain smoke while preparing food at um, he used to uh, chain smoke while preparing food, yet they still ate from him because they're, they're trashy and lack standards. The latest issue of Now Magazine happens to be out today. Best of Toronto Readers poll. Unfortunately, front and center, underneath the headline, Best of Toronto, is an image of an oversized Rob Ford. Pink Pig skin appearing, poking through his white shirt. Of course he wears the tie and suit jacket and pants while winking as he gives the middle finger salute times two. F you, F you, one, two, one, two. I feel fucked by this city where I am forever represented by bullshit and more lies. A circus from the ground level to the skies. And I feel so powerless, which is why I am prompted to step up from the shadows of the bowels of stinking Young Street. It is Toronto's best. This is Toronto's best. They boast that is it is the longest, but the longest stretch of what? Such a great city we once had before the Mike Harris, Mel Lassman debacle, and now this the Ford Nation band of irrationals, thug nation, rogue nation, crack and weed and drunken stupor nation, and I lived in Etobicoke's Lakeshore Village, south to Rob Ford's North Etobicoke, where I personally witnessed drug and alcohol use and abuse unmatched by any area I have ever seen. This then predominantly white working class is how they were labeled Though few seemed to work in the area and many were into all manner of substances from hard liquor to beer and cheap wine to weed, crystal meth, heroin, crack, etc. Pills were quite p 
popular, sold on the streets. And some of the stores sold stock they bought from neighborhood thieves, white women and men who'd rob supermarkets, then resell to the small area grocery stores. More reservation cigarettes are sold here than any place else as everyone smokes these Ziploc bags of cheap smokes. Many of the men died bef before the age of 65. Seven years on 6th Street near Lakeshore in Islington, where my eyes were made wide open to what many Canadians prefer to keep hidden. This is a place where good, healthy food options are hard to come by, and many are on welfare and or disability. Many ate from food banks, and food was really not a priority on the lists of most. Cigarettes and coffee, yes. Some drank the food bank coffee, while others made trips to the nearest Tim Hortons. And after cigarettes and coffee was their liquor and or drugs. Food in these parts appeared to be more of an afterthought. Police presence was regular. Up the street was a crack house. A young white male often in and out of jail ran this operation. His mother owned the house and everyone knew. They knew he sold, he sold drugs. They knew he sold crack. I saw so many white men and women in all manner of illegal activity as a way of life. They all loved their Rob Ford. They gently rocked the cradle of Ford Nation. And they felt represented. Months ago at the bar, I was laughing with a Chinese male regular patron who was cracking Rob Ford jokes when Dave, another regular and Rob Ford supporter, suddenly started yelling at us as he returned from smoking outside. No doubt he was angry at us. Two immigrants, one black, one Asian, for it's how Ford Nation truly feels. How dare we criticize such a great guy? According to this Ford fan, there was no evidence, no crack video that was in May. And it is now November. And finally, this third mayor has come somewhat clean, but only because he had no other choice. Living in a city like Toronto has been rather challenge, challenging as I come from a very sheltered background. I never had sex until the age of 21. Fearful of disease and unwanted pregnancies, being here has exposed me to much that I would otherwise not have known of had I not been forced to leave my family's home. Since then, I have lived in the, on the margins, ever observing, often feeling. I listen, I hear, I smell, I taste, I see. And the more I see, the less I want to see. Like this front page of the mayor of Toronto, at least they want the best hope for Toronto, which thankfully is for the mayor to resign. Unfortunately, there are many like him, like Dave, who happens to be here today, sitting in front of the TV at the bar, which is why I'm sitting here writing in the kitchen on this yet another slow day at Manzi Bar. No one admits, no one admits it but me that this city is broke. The people are broke. I mean, the, the, the city is not broke, but the people are broke, which is why I'll be lucky to have one somewhat busy day out of the six days I'm here. I happen to be menstrual and bleeding very heavily, so this is the last place I want to be, but here I am in early to boot because the, dr the driver took me to the butcher and the market for supplies. Business has been so slow that at this rate, I am prompted to quit this gig and try something else. As I'm tired of just existing, barely surviving, I want to live and I need to do my art. I'm ready to rise and I found someone with whom to advance. It comes as no surprise that yet again, it is a white person. Unfortunately, I've been told that this person, an Italian transgender, has a crush on me, but she's a sex trade worker who does things I would not do, as I'm strictly a domina, and safety is of utmost importance to me. It seems like the sex business has been lowered even deeper into the sewer with the deluge of trans sex workers who seem more interested in sex than money and view the money as a bonus, bone us. She allows customers to fuck her ass and ejaculate. 
Yes, I said the content of this recording may be offensive. Listener discretion is therefore advised. Friday, November 8th, 2013. It's so sad to see yet another dismal day at the club Manzi Bar. Upstairs, a customer has outside food spread before him on a table. How am I expected to win here? Where they allow this even after... I earned them their very first green pass from the public health inspector in over 32 years. 32 years these people had never passed an inspection. Here I am giving them their first green pass and they don't appreciate me. One of the dancers, strippers named Ivory, told me that she tried to copy my recipe at home and failed. And she's been dreaming of mine. <laughs> She's one of many who have said that they love my food and wish to make my recipes at their homes. White females are always trying to compete with us, black females, <laughs> and this is quite absurd. The Filipino customer paid for her half order of linguine alfredo. I only added mushroom, baby spinach, grape tomatoes, and red peppers. It was divine and she cleaned her plate. This extremely skinny white girl she thought that she could do as well as I do, making food from my menu. Many of these white people feel this way, and I find them all insulting, as I liken many of them to the Ford family of Etobicoke, Canada. They are always so shocked at the quality of my food, even if they are addicted to fast food garbage like Mickey D's. One of the strippers has the logo tattooed on her ankle. I'm loving it. Ouch. How can Pi compete against that? Few of these Canadians appear to have any good taste, and Rob Ford proved they have little sense. They underestimate others and overestimate themselves. And I have observed this and experienced it often here, where it seems that I am apparently being taught daily, since Canadians speak to me as though they believe themselves to always be teaching, and others behave in the same fashion and treat us the same way, always talking down to, at, the Negro. Such can be life in this Toronto. It is here that I want to insert a Betty Ford Clinic joke. At a bit past 11 p.m., I count my meager earnings. A joke, really. For it is the weekend, a Friday night, and I've only made approximately $60 on a Friday night in a supposedly world-class, in quotes, city. Toronto is a joke to me. Sadly, some dancers make even less. Several months ago at the bar, I sat through an episode during which one white man a regular boasted about his white skin privilege as the other white males present all roared with laughter. According to them, white supremacy was funny as it awarded them status above me in my supposed inferior, in quotes, blackness. I will never forget the day and I recall being appalled at the sheer callousness of their revelry for they never even try to hide this societal unfairness and imbalance. It revealed to me how I differ from those white males at the bar who felt no shame in wearing their whiteness on their sleeves. I would be embarrassed to acknowledge such privilege, perhaps due to the fact that I do possess a very good heart. As the white men laughed that day all uproariously, I took notes at their, their lack of compassion, lack of empathy, lack of goodness in their hearts. And I also knew that I would be having the last laugh. And all week, I have been laughing. For several of them were Rob Ford supporters upholding white rash with a capital T. The white strippers, many have chosen to stop buying my food. And I am actually thankful for the lack of sales as it's prompted me to seriously consider leaving this club that disgusts me daily. White strippers too cheap to pay for their food and always expecting customers to buy them food. They expect me to prepare food for them and don't want to pay. They also expect me to accept this bullshit while wearing a permanent smile for they expect me to be happy to serve them, to serve their 
rashy with a T, butts. They expect to be paid for dances, but don't want to pay me for food I've prepared for them that they have ordered. Thankfully, some of the strippers do have some class, but too many have the hustler mentality and always looking to get the better of others. Truth be told, I don't miss the white strippers as customers because their non-cooking butts can't appreciate good food. On Saturday, November 9th, it's approximately 7.40 p.m. I've just walked past the downstairs bar where the day bartender donkey is counted, counting at the end of his shift. There is no one at the bar. Earlier, there had been two custies, one of whom had to be escorted out due to his state of extreme drunkenness. I am happy to have missed that mess. I've just returned from having a smoke on the rooftop rooftop deck where Mar Mai Li, Mei Li, the Asian dancer, one of the Asian dancers was talking to Goldie, the French Canadian, about the after hours party they'd been to the night before where there had been a black guy who'd called himself a rapper. He approached the Chinese stripper Mei Li, who stopped him dead in his tracks as he thought he was sleek like so many others who approached these young girls to groom them into being pimped and damaged. Ruined is the word used by one such black male who called himself a gangster. The Asian girl also... The Asian girl said that she told this black rapper he would have to work for her, said that She's looking for a white college boy, and she's not the first or only Asian I've heard speak this way. But the black males push themselves on these girls, many of whom don't want them, because as Mai Li said, or Mei Li, what else have you got to offer? It is the way many of the females are today, all about the money. Consider them smart, I do. Smart enough to know that they can get away with selling drugs without consequence when the black doorman was fired for doing the same. Though, through it all, the black males refuse to listen, fail to hear, and don't appear to learn, especially deaf to the sounds of the black female. Another Asian stripper only seeks white males and has no interest in the black or Asian males she complained about. The rich white boy who wouldn't introduce her to his family. I heard one of the new waitresses complain that she'd only made $50. It was close to the end of her shift, the end of the night, the, the, sorry, the end of the day shift on a Saturday in this wannabe world-class city. My new Kenyan assistant starts at 8. I look forward to seeing her. I bought her a couple of woolen things as she, she needs a winter coat. It's very cold here in November. She's been living in Florida and unprepared for our winters. I have several warm things I haven't worn in several years. They are of good quality and in fine condition. I'm happy to give to Gloria, the cutest Kenyan with the sweetest voice, so sweet and beautiful, thoughtful and willing to learn. She asks to work for me without being paid because she wants to learn to cook from me and she's been very helpful but the lack of business and general tone of the city has me seriously considering a change because the operation, a restaurant kitchen in a strip club in Toronto is really not a place I ever imagined I'd find myself. But here I am and after nearly two years, I have had enough. Enough of the trashy white girls, mostly all fake in every way possible. They are demanding and nasty and clueless and stingy to the extreme in many cases ever ready to play someone, get the better of others. They are greedy and selfish and tedious. I look forward to something different and new.